Hello everyone, my name is Mike Temple, the IA's Technical Program Director, and I want to thank you for joining us today. The Irrigation Association is excited to present the next webinar in our new series sponsored by manufacturers. Today's webinar, called Enhanced Irrigation with Smart Pumping, will be presented by Schneider Electric. I have just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. This session will be recorded and all phones will be muted. This webinar is worth one CEU. A question and answer session will be held at the end of the webinar. If you have any questions, please type them into the question box on the right hand side of your screen and they will be addressed at the end of the session. Now a little background on Schneider Electric and our speakers. Schneider Electric is a global supplier of electrical solutions such as automation, motor control, and circuit protection focused on several key markets, including pumping and irrigation. A primary focus being to work with customers and help them to optimize their solutions and industry performance. The approach being to understand the market trends and applications, develop dedicated solutions for those industries, and jointly work together with customers to improve and enhance their systems by providing intelligent solutions aimed specifically at their applications. Our speakers today are Stephen Allman, Jack Kramer, and Richard Jennings. Stephen is a digital plant offer manager, has more than 20 years in the electrical industry, and has been an application engineer and a product manager for all the major automation product categories. In his time in the automation industry, he has helped Schneider create numerous programs and solutions to help drive the Internet of Things evolution and press into the era of smart systems using predictive analytics to address such issues as improving uptime and reliability while minimizing the impact of downtime. Jack Kramer is the market segment manager, has more than 30 years of experience in the electrical industry, and has been involved in the last 10 years in the pumping industry. He's involved in key industry associations such as the Irrigation Association, the Hydraulic Institute, and the National Groundwater Association, and holds committee, chair, and board positions in several of them. During his time working in the pump industry, he has helped Schneider create numerous solutions that both enhance pumping efficiency and address such issues as predictive maintenance and downtime. Richard Jennings is the senior offer manager and has 20 years of experience in industrial and process automation in the project. Service product management role. He brings a focus for automation solutions on the intersection of information technology and operational technology. The use of today's data-rich automation environment to provide actionable information for informed decision-making to optimize application efficiency and reliability. And now over to Stephen, Jack, and Richard. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I uh, look forward to uh, a good presentation and certainly very open to your questions, so please uh, Feel free during the question period to, to pose any questions you may have on this topic. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the pumps and irrigation, uh, what kind of pumps. It's fundamentally, you, you all know that probably, but a couple of different kinds of pumps. Also talk about trends that are impacting the pumping market today and pumping applications today. Many of them, most of them impacting the irrigation side of things as well. Uh, then talk a little bit about smart pumping itself as an overview. And then I'll turn this over to Richard Jennings, who's going to share with us uh, BFDs in irrigation. And then Steve Almond, who will be talking about the digitization and smart monitoring uh, of the pumps themselves. In terms of the pumps themselves, there's, fundamentally, there's, there's two kinds of pumps. There's surface pumps and submersible pumps. One is to get groundwater level, ground, groundwater. The other, obviously, is to get uh, below uh, source water level. Uh, down uh, down on the ground. So fundamentally, those two different kind of pumps, but the applications are very similar across both. In terms of the trends, one trend today that's impacting the U.S. and it's it's uh, off and on, but it's, it's almost always on somewhere, and that is the drought. Uh, for those of you who may be from California, you're very familiar with this. Uh, in fact, from what I hear, there's more issues coming, but. Uh, it, 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 the impact of the drought, uh, obviously, it causes a reduction in the surface water. Uh, communities want to keep their surface water for things other than irrigation, for consumption and so forth. 
which in turn increases well drilling to get those to get those downhole wells. Uh, and over time, as the water level decreases, uh, the well depth has to increase, hence enlarging the pump size and increasing the cost of the pump, cost of operation, cost of maintenance, and so forth. So the result is obviously is increased pump usage and expenses. Another one is around environmental regulations and costs. As many of you are probably aware, the CO2 emissions are being regulated. Uh, estimate is they'll be reduced by 50% uh, in, over the next decade or so, but they're being regulated, it's being driven, and being driven. And part of that is, dry, is changing the uh, drives of these pumps from engine driven to motor driven pumps, which are more CO2 friendly. Uh, and as well, interestingly enough, this may not be well understood, but fuel costs, if you look at the cost of electrical versus diesel driven systems, you know, back 15, 20 years ago, uh, diesel driven were actually less expensive to run. Today, as the cost of fuel continues to go up, they become actually more expensive to run than electric versions. So the result is the actual pump drivers themselves are shifting uh, from engine driven to motor driven type solutions. Another one is around energy efficiency. Interestingly enough, pumps consume almost 50%, well, I'm sorry, they consume 25% of all motor-driven energy. But because of the uh, um, various, various physical laws, and Richard will go more into this, they represent 50% of the potential savings of energy. And as I say, they've never been regulated. In spite of the fact that they're so, so, they're so energy-driven, the DOE has just developed recently pump efficiency standards that will go into effect next year. Uh, and one option of this is not just the pump itself, it's actually the what they what is called the extended product approach, which means that it includes the pump, the motor, and a potential VFD. So you can you can actually measure the system. And um, in addition, utilities are beginning to offer incentives for efficient pumps. Pacific Gas and Electric Out West is just an example. But there's over 50 utilities today that are offering uh, uh, incentives for, for efficient pumps. So installing the systems actually may save you money. Uh, and the result of this trend is uh, energy efficient motors, which you've probably heard about, as well as VFDs to drive those motors. Um, another trend is just, pump, is just pump, smart pumping itself. What people don't realize is that if you look at the life cycle cost of a pump system, only 10% of that life cycle is actually the cost of the pump. 40% of that life cycle is energy, and close to another 40% is around operation and maintenance. So it's very expensive. And we're going to talk about today, we'll talk about today smart pumping, addressing those issues, those energy issues and those maintenance and operating costs. So smart pumping uh, will, will, will both monitor and minimize these costs. And with that, we'll just kind of give you a, a big picture overview of, of structure of smart pumping. Obviously, we call we have what are called connected products, which are fundamentally the sensors, the drives, the starters, however, the, however that pump is, happens to be driven. Um, and then as we get into the intelligence, we'll talk about some PLCs, uh, as well as uh, talk about some analytics and what's called Eco Structure Machine Advisor. So with that, I will turn it over to Richard Jennings, who will share with us a little bit about uh, VFDs in the irrigation world. Thank you, Jack. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to start with is just uh, that irrigation has been with uh, human civilization since pretty much civilization started, is the rise of the first cities uh, in Mesopotamia was uh, also tied to uh, irrigation and the increased agricultural production that that enabled, which supported those cities. And there's still remnants of that, those irrigation systems around, but mostly those are pretty simple, just uh, channels, you know, uh, channels in the ground, uh, diverting water, uh, groundwater around. Uh, other areas, the Roman Empire around the Mediterranean, North Africa and Europe, um, they took irrigation extremely seriously. And with the typical Roman approach, they uh, brought engineering and sophistication to that there irrigation endeavors and many of those uh, constructions are still uh, visible today and in some cases still working today. They, they tend to build to last. 
And this is something all around the world. If you're going everywhere from uh, the Egyptians uh, along the Nile to Southeast Asia, to China, uh, to um, Central America, is every major civilization extensively used irrigation. The type of irrigation, the method, uh, varied based on the climate, the geography, the crops being used, uh, the technology available. But irrigation has been a constant uh, throughout human civilization. And if we're looking at today, especially here in the US, irrigation is a bigger and more complex endeavor than it ever has been at any time in human history. The amount of land under irrigation and the complexity uh, of the irrigation systems is just more than it, than it ever has been. It's an integral part of the agriculture business. It's become highly technical, it's highly automated, highly controlled in today's world. And this is necessary because it, it's an enabling technology for higher efficiency of production, better yields, and more efficient use of resources, both energy and water resources. One of these tools, as Jack was talking about, for more energy efficient uh, 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 irrigation is the use of variable frequency, variable frequency drives or VFDs for irrigation pump control. Is when you're using an electric motor to uh, run the pump, then a VFD is a very good solution for how you control that pump. If you're just running the motor directly, uh, you'll be using a lot of energy if you're regulating the flow, because you, you'll be using a flow restriction or a control valve to reduce the flow to the required levels. A variable frequency drive allows you to directly control the speed of the pump and therefore the output of the pump. And this enables you to realize some very significant energy savings anytime you're not running at 100% output of a pump. The reason for that is to do with physics and we're not going to spend the, the time today to go through exactly all the calculations and equations that make this up. But essentially is that the relationship between the energy used to run the pump and the output from the speed and once therefore also the flow output of the pump is a cube function. So if you're reducing the, the output of the pump from 100% to 80%, you're not really you're reducing the energy use to 80% of what it is, you're reducing it by 80% by 80% by 80%. So you're saving close to 50% of the energy. If you're dropping that output to 60% instead, you're saving close to 80% of the energy it's because of this cube relationship. So because of this is the use of VFDs is extremely attractive from a point of view of reducing that cost of ownership of the pump system. As Jack showed you earlier that your energy usage is going to be up to 40% of your total cost of, of owning and operating that, that pumping system. So if we can significantly reduce that energy use, we can significantly reduce that overall cost. And in addition, due to energy saving initiatives being driven by uh, both governments, uh, bodies, and utilities, is there's very often rebates available to offset some of the capital costs for installing VFDs to control pumps in an energy efficient manner. So not only can you reduce your 40% of your ownership costs, for the energy use, but you can reduce that some of that 10% of the capital cost of purchasing and installing the pump as well. But in today's world is we're looking at what can we do beyond just application of the laws of physics with a, a VFD. And this is where the, you get that intersection between the operational technology, that's the pumping, the pump design, the motor design, design of your sprinkler head systems and all, all those, those applic pumping application and irrigation, irrigation application issues. The intersection of that with the informa information technology side. This is what everybody's, the industrial internet of things, a favorite buzzword of today. And this is something that is being used in virtually any industry to address those pressures for to maximize productivity, maximize the efficiency, and minimize the manpower required to operate things. The idea behind it is behind the IIoT is well, there's several different definitions, but the one I've got here is connecting intelligent devices to bring actionable information to relevant personnel to enable informed decisions to maximize efficiency and productivity, which is a great bunch of buzzwords. But what it means is that we connect all the equipment and the devices together and we use the information and the intelligence that's available in those devices to pull the useful information to get together and present it in a analyzed and processed way which enable people to make real decisions based on real data to run things more efficiently and more effectively. 
When it comes to uh, pumping and irrigation pumping in particular, is uh, if we're looking at how do we integrate intelligent VFDs in there, the types of VFDs you need have to address the basic requirements uh, for irrigation. So you need to have pump control capability and pump monitoring capability. You need to be able to operate on the power supplies commonly available, typically 240, 480 volt supplies. Very often three phase, but in many areas, single phase is the only one that's available. So you need to, uh, need to be able to operate off a single phase supply. Um, it also needs to take into account that when we're looking at the environment for installation is that it needs to be suitable for outdoor installation and minimal uh, maintenance under those conditions. That's just on the basic requirements if you're planning on uh, uh, installing an irrigation pump. If we're looking at uh, adding the IIoT connected product intelligence, then you need something more advanced. Uh, an example of that would be the ATV 600 Ultima Process Series from Schneider Electric, where we combine those basic requirements along with connectivity. So you can integrate into control systems and to the internet and the cloud uh, for that data uh, management and handling. We add in embedded energy monitoring um, capabilities and, and energy usage calculations into it. And also pump monitoring, uh, pump analysis, and application protection functions built inside. The idea is that enables us to increase the efficiency, the reliability, and the accountability of the application system. And what does that mean in real terms? Well, if we're looking at efficiency, first of all is we know we uh, very often is we want to, with smart pumping, we're talking about saving energy and managing energy. The first step in, ma in managing energy is measuring energy. Built inside the VFDs are uh, energy monitoring capabilities and the drive can be used as a means of measuring and calculating how much energy you're using and trending that over time. This can also be reported uh, externally, uh, so you can extract that data and put it into reports uh, uh, that you generate yourself. In addition, um, modern drives, uh, modern intelligent drives can also look at what the energy usage is and give you a direct measurement and calculation of how much energy and how much money and how much uh, CO2 generation you've saved by using a VFD compared to across the line starting. But this data on energy usage can be used for more things is if we're looking at the trending values that come from it. If you see from that little um, chart on the left, oh, these are screenshots from the drive, so you can view the, the, this data directly from the drive as well as through remote systems. You can see there we've got a repeated pattern of energy usage as the pump is running to serve different irrigation needs at different times of day. You can see that pattern repeats, but in that last cycle, it seems to be changing. We're using more energy. That we can use as a means of interpreting and analyzing the data, we can tell, well, something's changed in how this pump application is working. It may be that we have activated some additional sprinkler, uh, sprinkler heads, so it's uh, requiring more water, so more energy is being used. Or it could be that we've got a degradation of the pump. You've got a, a bearing that's wearing out, so it's taking more energy to turn the shaft, or the impellers are wearing so that it's less efficient in moving liquid. But this can be used as a trigger to invent, uh, to uh, get the operators to intervene and check on what the actual status is. And this data is logged and it's viewable. You can see it in instantaneous families, but also daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly reports are viewable from the drive. But in addition to this, just energy monitoring and, and analysis is there's also functions inside the intelligent drives of today to try and improve the efficiency. So an example of this would be the, uh, what we call the friction loss compensation function. And what this does, it sounds a little complex, but what it's doing is it enables the drive to adapt the output pressure from the pumps according to the variable flow rates. And this means, the, the idea behind this is if you have higher flow rates, you will have a higher pressure drop through your piping system between the pump and your sprinkler heads, so that if your pump output pressure needs to be higher at high flow rates in order to maintain the same uh, pressure at the uh, sprinkler head. So if the flow rate is varying, for example, if you're uh, using uh, different numbers or different amounts of um, irrigation sp uh, sprinklers at any one time, is the drive can automatically adapt and regulate the pump output pressure to different levels to ensure you have correct pressure at point of use with the minimum energy requirement. From a reliability side is this is critical in any irrigation application because you need to be 
confident that when you think you're running your irrigation systems, you are in fact actually running them and it is delivering the correct amount of water where it needs to go. And VFDs and the intelligent VFDs of today can be a very powerful tool for improving this reliability. First of all, just by basically the basic principles of using a VFD, so you're regulating speed and, and uh, rate of pressure changes, is that reduces the mechanical shocks in the piping system. Uh, that means less wear and tear, less breakdowns. But also by uh, using that speed control um, instead of back pressure from a control valve, you're reducing the wear and tear on the pump. So that also helps you reduce the maintenance requirement. But in addition is these intelligent pumps can also look at what's going on in the drive, in the motor, in the pump and in the system to detect abnormal conditions occurring, and respond to protect the pump and the system and to ensure minimum data, uh, minimum minimum interruption of service and notifying uh, the operators if there are any problems. So it gives you a reduction in the required maintenance and also a reduction in the unplanned maintenance, the number of breakdowns that you have. So a couple of examples of this is, for example, uh, dry running or cavitation protection. If you have insufficient water coming into the inlet of the pump, the pump is not only not going to be able to deliver the correct output, but you have the potential of it damaging the pump, either through cavitation causing principally impeller damage and faster wear and efficiency drops in the pump. But also even at high, if there's even less uh, water available, potentially causing overheating and, and damage to the pump itself. So the drive can in fact do a detection of this even without having any pressure sensors or upstream sensors in there at all. Just by the drive looking at how much energy it takes to turn the shaft of the motor compared to what it expects it to take. And if there's less energy required, it means you've got less mass inside the pump uh, chamber, which means you have less water available. And the drive can react and protect, uh, protect the pump and shut it down and call for operator assistance if that's occurring. So it protects your assets and avoids uh, equipment damage. In addition, if a problems do, do occur, and inevitably problems will occur, that's, that's just life for us, is how do we ensure that we get things running again as quickly as possible? One example of this uh, with the Alphabar process drives is the built-in uh, diagnostic capabilities will detect many error conditions occurring. And the screen, like you see there, would come up with a, an error message telling you what it is. But one thing on there is you see that little icon there in the corner. If you press the keypad button that's uh, just below that, that will actually change the screen and bring up a QR code. Now, this QR code, if you take your smartphone out and you scan that QR code, and by the way, you can do that here if you've got a camera handy and pointed at the screen, but if you scan that QR code, that will pop up a little uh, link window, which if you tap on it, will take you to a website. That website is specific to this drive and error condition. So that website will tell you what the drive model number is, what the drive serial number is, which is great if you're calling a tech support line because they're always the first questions they'll ask. But in addition, it describes what is the, uh, the error condition that's uh, active, what are the likely causes that, cause, that uh, made that error condition occur, and also some suggestions on what actions you should take to fix it so you can get your equipment running again. In addition, you can also access from, from that page is documentation, so you can get the manuals, the wiring diagrams, and all that information is available as well. So that helps the operator on the site in sorting out what the problem is, and getting the problem fixed and the uh, irrigation pump back running and uh, providing service again. So on accountability is not only uh, are we helping improve that performance, uh, but we also have the ability to take that information and present it and make it available to operators and managers uh, to, to track what's going on. So what the drive can do is provide that energy and performance management on energy usage, pump efficiencies, um, performance data, which can be the core of a predictive maintenance uh, cycle, enabling you to look at, have your equipment being monitored uh, as it's operating and the system to detect and flag and tell you when the, uh, the equipment is showing signs that maintenance is required. So this means you can schedule your maintenance as it's needed to prevent uh, un unexplained breakdowns, but not uh, spending excess time on unnecessary maintenance. And that information is available through multiple ways. You can get it from the drive itself. Uh, if you have uh, a communication network to a control system, you can hook it up through any digital uh, uh, communication protocol, just plug in the right module for that comm system. Or the drives or the standard have 
Ethernet inputs with their built-in web server. What sort of things can you get out of it? Is on that application monitoring is one of the key functions in intelligent drives today is to look at how the pump is performing. The alpha process drives include the ability to enter the pump characteristic curves into the drive. So those characteristic curves, that's the manufacturer's data on what's the power required to turn the to, to run the pump at a given speed and what's your pressure and flow output uh, going to be at those uh, at the different speed and power usages. With that information in the drive, the drive knows how the pump should be performing. Since the drive is monitoring the application and controlling it, it also knows how the pump is actually performing and can compare that and contrast those two, and then you can get that direct measurement of the pump efficiency. That can be tracked from the drive, and you can see that performance in the characteristic curves or just an efficiency monitoring, and that's a critical uh, point of data for this performance um, uh, metrics and for predictive maintenance uh, calculations. It enables you to actually make a measure of how much money uh, efficiency drops in your operational conditions are causing you and use that uh, cost calculation in order to uh, make maintenance decisions. Lastly, with that connectivity, is that built-in web server in the drive gives you a very cost-effective means of connecting to the drive. It is also uh, designed with cybersecurity in mind, so the drive has an Achilles Level 2 cybersecurity rating, which is uh, very important in today's world, and also you have username and password requirements to connect to it. But that gives you a view into the drive. You can uh, dashboard and display and see the data that you're interested in. That's fully configurable for each user to set up the data that they need to see if they connect to it. Uh, based on the application or their, their own needs. Um, and if your user account has uh, right access privileges granted it to it, you can actually use that as a means of programming or adjusting the settings in the drive, as well as just viewing data and troubleshooting. But I'll hand over to Steve, who will tell you a lot more about uh, how these uh, system connectivity works and the benefits that that can give you. Thank you, Richard. Good day, everyone. I'm Steve Almond. What I wanted to start with is just the discussion around what the digital transformation that's happening today and in, in the advancements of technology means for everyone in business. And McKinsey, one of the consulting firms that are quite reputable, tried to quantify this for everyone in industry and business. So they went and performed this intensive study. And when they came back, their results that they were able to quantify showed that through the digital transformation um, that's happening today that we're all experiencing, it brings greater operational efficiency in all aspects of business. And so that means that in a company that's uh, developing products, 20 to 50 percent reduction in getting products to market, time to market. Uh, in, and then in optimized use of expertise and know-how, 45 to 55 percent reduction there. And that's just being able to put your hands on information and knowing how to use that information faster and better than ever before. We see an uptick in productivity, three to five percent, and then downtime is a significant reduction, again, 30 to 50 percent there. And so this study is across a number of industries, but it's very applicable here in irrigation as well. So the four main drivers around um, digitization of pumping equipment and pumping panels is in, in, in business in general is around these four um, key categories. So connectivity, mobility, cloud and analytics and these really allow us to start to improve the use of resources to be more agile and make decisions faster and to create uh, new opportunities that are digital in nature so when when we look at irrigation equipment and throughout its life cycle everyone involved with it uh, see some benefits. So in the in the design and engineering of the equipment, we start to see smart design and smart engineering where we can reduce the time to market through simulation. Um, we can improve the quality and efficiency by um, just automating tasks. And there's a 30% reduction there 
through the implementation of these digital technologies. When it comes to commissioning and operation, through smart commissioning and smart operation, Richard talked an awful lot about what the drives are able to do now. And, and then the connection of equipment up to the cloud allows us to start to see some really interesting possibilities there, as well as getting that pump connected and, um, and moving water quickly. And then finally, the maintenance and services piece, and that's the one that I really want to touch on, is, uh, is around smart maintenance, which is making maintenance efficiency uh, more efficient and faster through information tracking, and then using smart services or digital cloud services to track and monitor the equipment remotely. And what I want to show you is a little bit about how you do that, but the, the data is suggesting that you can save up to 50% um, of your time towards uh, corrective actions and, and getting uh, pump panels and equipment uh, repaired and back online. So when we talk about smart services for irrigation and irrigation equipment, one of the products that we have at Schneider Electric is EcoStructure Machine Advisor. And what this really is, is, is a product that allows you to take uh, the data feeds coming off of any piece of equipment around the world and move it to the cloud and then be able to view it in a uh, very nice web application so that you can evaluate your equipment's health, um, assess if it's operating properly, and then also receive notifications if there's an issue. When you try to implement an architecture like that, Essentially, you have the connected products such as the drive, and then uh, maybe potentially a controller or some sort of interface device that would allow the connectivity to the cloud for uh, a cloud-based uh, application like Machine Advisor to operate. The nice thing about something like this, because it's in the cloud, it doesn't care what hardware is down below that you're integrating with. So this, this uh, it could be Schneider products or any other manufacturer's products that you could use this um, machine advisor software with. So what exactly does a program like this give you? Well, we find that in general, these types of um, programs offer three levels of capability around a digital service. So the first one is track, and that is really around the idea of being a, a repository of information needed to maintain and keep that equipment operating at, at optimum level. So that could be um, any kind of documentation like bills and materials, maintenance logs, manuals, um, any of the uh, preventative maintenance tasks that you might have planned, as well as showing the equipment that would be involved in uh, that irrigation panel. The next level up would be monitor, and monitor is really the idea of now using a connection that allows you to read the data off of that uh, piece of equipment or pumping panel that allows you to see how it's performing in real time. And this can give you the way to evaluate health, or you can see some of the key performance uh, indicator data, and this is where you can start to receive a notification that something uh, is alerting a point of need. And then the final piece, or the last piece, or the highest level, is really uh, in termed in this application fixed, but it's all about the ability to do remote diagnosis and remote um, software programming on the fly. So it allows you to be able to go in, monitor what's going on, take a look at the software uh, that's controlling, make adjustments, modifications, and perhaps present uh, prevent a, a required trip to that pump panel um, just to do some basic software connection or reprogramming. So a little bit more about what this tracking capability does. And what makes this really nice is when you start to have a fleet of pumps that you're looking at, it's, it's nice when the drive is telling you a number of different things about it and its performance. But when you have a fleet of these machines and they're, they're um, deployed a, a, across a large area of um, land, it's nice to be able to have all of that right at your fingertips. 
And so what, what software systems like these that are in the cloud do is they allow you to bring those data feeds up from each one of those assets as they're deployed, each one of those pumping panels or irrigation systems, wherever they're deployed. And then you can, you can um, keep all this information in one central place so it's easy to get. So again, the uh, materials, the documents, everything you need to work with that piece of equipment um, to make sure that it's running the way it needs to run uh, can all be here and then it's one uh, central connection point that allows you to access all the different pieces of literature for each asset that you have deployed or pump panel you have deployed and you can set up with this software you can set up uh, user groups you can design how it looks and you can even put in time-based maintenance tasks for the equipment this is really a sort of a designed to be sort of an offline type activity where there's not a live data feed and i just want to mention that in that it's a repository so for this particular feature for us here at schneider electric this is really a free part of the software so it's something that if you're interested in 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 um, pursuing you could download this you could um, effort this and really the true cost is just your effort to work with it and then um, see some begin to work with some of the power and capability of these cloud services. So the next part is monitor, and monitor is where things get really interesting because now you're collecting and visualizing your equipment data, and you're increasing the availability because you can now start to detect when things are going wrong. So when the drive is detecting issues and it's not, uh, you know, it's showing a larger current level because something's starting to wear out. This is the way that you get that warning delivered to you and um, then you can also see the information on a nice dashboard and you can add in different things that you would like to see that are important to you when you're looking at uh, what's going on with this piece of uh, pumping equipment the, another piece that uh, is part of what this does is the health um, in the monitoring we can do a health application and what this really gets to is the idea of beginning to learn what the machine does. And so this is using big machine learning and uh, AI application to understand what a good condition is and understand when the pump is starting to move out of a good condition and then notify you of that. So it's like a step ahead of just basic analytics and understanding of good versus bad, but it's actually learning over time what's good and what's, what's bad and then being able to alert on a bad situation and then the last part which is the most powerful part um, as far as the monitoring goes is just the ability to give a warning or a notification that something needs attention and when you have a fleet of pumps deployed getting an alert on your uh, phone or an email via t text message or email is a, a really nice way it says hey this is uh, needing um, some support and then some details around what's going on. So then you can get the repair parts planned in advance. Um, you can know what you need to take out when you got to go out and look at it. And then it will just help reduce downtime and improve availability. The last piece is fix. And fix is really just where we start putting software that traditionally resides on your local computer up in the cloud as part of the cloud service. So that you can go in and and get involved in these panels as deep as you need to be. Or if you have a service contract, your um, company that supplied the pump panel to you can come in with their, with the service contract, go right into the panel, get you up and running as quick as possible. And some of the specific details we have here are around code analysis and improving the uh, software and capabilities of the software so that it, it runs better and better. But this is the direction that the um, industry is heading. This is the impact of the digitization and what we're seeing today in terms of technology. So I've put a couple links in here. Like I mentioned, there is a free component to this if you're interested in it. I've got the links here so you can get more information and take a look at it. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Jack and he can close us out. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, I hope you've uh, been a very fruitful session around smart pumping, understanding all the, the options and, and ways that we can achieve smart pumping. And with that, I think we're going to turn it on to, to uh, the question period and see if anybody has any questions.
Yeah, th thanks guys, uh, it was a great presentation. Um, and please, if you have questions, uh, type those in as a question box on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, while we're waiting on a few questions to come in, do you guys have any like final thoughts you, know, you want to put out there for our audience? So essentially what we're hoping to do is to present, uh, uh, and what we hope we conveyed today was the uh, idea that we can use the information available in the equipment today. You can pull that together and you can pull useful parts out of that to present uh, information which allows you to run your equipment more effectively, more reliably, more energy in a more energy efficient manner. So you get a more cost effective solution which is becoming increasingly important as uh, the agricultural industry is put under uh, even greater pressure today than in the past. In, in addition, you'll, you'll find that there are many incentives that are out there to help promote this, uh, from utilities and so on and so forth, you mentioned earlier, uh, it will incent the investment. Uh, so uh, that's, a, that's always an upside. Uh, again, any, any questions we have? Yeah, we, we've got some questions coming in now. Um, first one, do your VFDs communicate with any major central control irrigation controllers on the market? Okay, with the VFDs, is the answer would be yes. Um, is the VFDs um, we have, uh, especially the Ultra Process 600 series, uh, they have standard that's built in is Modbus communication um, and Ethernet, TCP. You also have the ability to plug in communication modules for pretty much every industrial protocol. Uh, Ethernet IP, device net, Profibus, Profinet, and a bunch of others. So uh, also they all have analog outputs as well if you already have a remote I.O. system. So 4 to 20 milliamps, 0 to 10 volt signals, relay contacts, all of those for uh, methods of conveying information to a central control system are, are available. And as Steve mentioned, is we also uh, can help provide is the hardware if you need to have um, a communication system, a secure uh, connection to the cloud to go to those control systems. Great. Um, next question. Is it possible to retrofit existing VFDs with energy monitoring data loggers? Yes, um, is uh, energy monitoring devices uh, can be purchased as separate items. So um, the PowerLogix uh, system uh, can be used um, from Schneider Electric. We can, those can be retrofitted as a means of uh, monitoring and providing that power usage data. So if you have existing systems, then yeah, we can do um, put in the energy monitoring on that and connect that the outputs from those to the uh, equipment monitoring uh, networks. Great. Uh, we also had a request to see that that slide that had the links on it. I think it was one slide back. If you wouldn't mind putting that up while we move on to the next question. Um, do these products use cell services to connect online? They do use cell service and really the connectivity is open in whatever uh, method you have. So. If you're using um, some gateways do have cellular modems built into them. And then if you do have the ability to connect to uh, the internet through some kind of wire or cable, whether it be wired or wireless, they also support that too. So whatever methodology currently is available, wired, wireless or cellular, uh, those are all options that are open to the, the end user to, or person who's going to, to deploy this pump system uh, in their architecture for data management. And these systems can also be connected to a uh, radio and uh, communication network is connecting uh, these types of devices into those uh, existing systems is also possible. They don't tend to be uh, preferred solutions for new systems, but if you have an existing system, yes, we can connect into that. Okay, great. And sort of following up on on that, uh, are there monitoring tools which are not cloud-based, so software that's resident on the client's network? Uh, 
um, yes, um, you can get uh, tools to do that. Is uh, you can also make use of those um, uh, uh, monitoring systems that are actually embedded in the drive itself. Uh, but yes, you can get systems that are locally um, uh, locally installed on the network and separated from the cloud. The sophistication of those systems tends to be a little less because you don't have the um, the expert systems uh, attached to it uh, that you can get on the cloud systems. Okay, great. All right, next question. With the fix feature and the ability to look at the code, is that accessed remotely through your technicians from anywhere or does it have to be on-site access? That fix feature is designed to be a cloud service. So whoever logs in would have access to that capability. And so it doesn't matter who or where, as long as uh, it's part of the um, as part of the it, technician using it has access to it. Okay, great. Uh, is it possible to place a drive on existing single speed motor? If you have an existing um, three phase uh, AC, mo uh, AC motor, then yes, you can um, you could retrofit that and add a, a VFD to uh, control it. Um, is depending on the um, the type of the motor, you may need to um, uh, also get uh, DVDT or sine wave filters, especially if it's a very old motor, uh, to prevent. Um, uh, uh, heat, uh, overheating on the coils, but uh, any modern motor would be able to connect with a, you could be retrofit with an, a, an extra VFD. Okay, great. Um, we had uh, several requests for uh, the presentation, I'm wondering if it would be available uh, for download. Um, we will be uh, putting this uh, webinar on our the Irrigation Association YouTube site within the next few days. Um, and as far as downloading the, um, the PowerPoint slides, there was a request for that. Uh, I'll have to leave that up to you guys and how you would like to handle that. Would, would y'all just want them to, to contact you for that information? I think that would be the best, uh, best way to go about that, yes. Okay, great. All right, another question. Can the VFD status and fault reset function be done via the remote connection? Um, yes, the remote connection you can use for, you can use that to access the full diagnostic information uh, on the drive is the fault resets for um, the vast majority of uh, detected error conditions can be reset uh, remotely. Uh, there are some uh, safety critical ones which cannot be done uh, and need somebody on site to, um, to reset the drive. But the, those are the ones you really shouldn't be resetting remotely anyway. But yes, the, uh, the vast majority and all the ones of uh, remotely rectifiable conditions certainly can be reset remotely. Great. Uh, there's a question, is this available for the landscape industry? We don't have any restrictions, so if you feel there's an application there and you would like to, absolutely. Yes, um, the, the, it absolutely can. It's, uh, these types of systems are used on a lot of um, uh, irrigation systems on uh, recreational facilities and uh, large landscaping projects. Um, and it is integratable for the um, for the smaller ones. Um, so yes, absolutely. Great. Uh, another question here: Is there a cost associated with programming a pump curve into the drive? No. The uh, the as long as you have the um, uh, characteristic curve information from the pump manufacturer, you just need to get uh, five points in the best efficiency point. You enter the um, motor speed, power usage, uh, output uh, flow, output pressure, data from that curve for those five points plus best efficiency point, and then the drive has the data. So uh, that you can do during commissioning, or you can even add it in later on um, 
uh, down the line if you don't have the information at the time. It's, the, it's a standard function available in the drive. Great. Um, that's, that's about it for the questions. Oh, here we go. A few more coming in now. Uh, is the data available from your users available for benchmarking across your platform? So could, could you re repeat that question for us? Is the data available from your users available for benchmarking across your platform? So I are, guess are, are data points shareable, I guess, to... Um, the data points, the, the data values uh, remain the property of the um, of the user. So um, they would be able to share it amongst their own um, applications, but it wouldn't be available to uh, any third parties. Okay. Uh, is there a minimum horsepower pump on which it makes economic sense to use a VFD versus a soft start pump motor controller? Um, there's not really a minimum horsepower on that. It's more to do with uh, how you're operating it. Is if you're using a soft start operation, typically you know you're planning on running it at full speed. Is the VFDs really re realize the energy savings when you're uh, running the pump below full speed? Um, so uh, it's it's a matter of uh, what your planned operational usage is. Um, Remembering, of course, that if you're running it at full speed, but regulating, uh, throttling back the flow using a, um, a control valve, then that's you should use a VFD. You almost always save energy on it. Uh, it's a um, a return of investment calculation, and uh, we can help you with that if you've got specific case information. But in most cases, um, if you're looking over the life of a pumping system, is the if if unless you're operating at full speed for much of the time, then uh, VFD is, is the more uh, cost effective solution overall. And remember too, that a lot of times pumps are oversized, so they don't need to run at full speed to be able to produce what's needed. So if they can run at 80% of full speed, it only takes 50% of the power. And that's the real benefit to using the VFD, especially as everyone typically realizes that uh, pumps are often oversized. Great. All right, another question. Um, do all VFDs have the energy metering feature and how accurate is that feature? Um, all VFDs have some form of energy monitoring. Is uh, The accuracy and the repeatability of those readings does vary a lot. So um, with the uh, of our process drives that we were talking about uh, with a lot of these intelligent pump functions is those have a higher accuracy energy monitoring with a maximum error of 5%. Uh, that was done on those drives because of that integration of the pump characteristic curves and that combined with the higher accuracy energy monitoring gives you the extra diagnostics, the energy, the pump efficiency monitoring, the ability to uh, estimate flow output without a flow sensor and things like that. So you'll be able to get some a energy use data from uh, virtually any uh, VFD, but um, to have accurate and repeatable readings is you need to take, um, you, you need to look at specifications. Okay, uh, we have a few minutes remaining. Are there any more questions? Uh, feel free to enter those. Um, uh, while we're wait, uh, do you guys have any kind of wrap up thoughts or, or just sort of final thoughts for the audience here? Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for, for joining us today. Hopefully it's been educational. And uh, as, as we say, we, when, we, when we talk about pumps, you know, we frequently just don't understand uh, the life cycle cost, the applications and this kind of thing. Uh, so the use of VFTs and monitoring systems can reduce that significantly. And as you saw earlier, you know, that, that represents almost 80% of the life cycle of the pump. So uh, feel free to reach out if you have more information or want more information or have specific questions about specific applications, and we'd be more than happy to, to assist you. Okay, great. Um, not seeing any more questions coming in, so I think we can wrap up just a few minutes early. 
I want to thank everyone for attending and don't forget to check our website for upcoming webinars during the year. I want to give a big thanks to Stephen, Jack and Richard for sharing their knowledge with us today. If you have a question that we did not answer, feel free to email education at irrigation.org and we'll pass your question on to the appropriate person. Have a great day, everyone. And this concludes our webinar.